So as my school was on the, in this area, which is a fur area, I just decided one day to just come here and knock a, at the door of a workshop and say, oh, hello, you need help. More and more I was learning how to work with fur. I discovered all the possibilities there is to create with fur. And, I would, I, and at the end I said to myself, okay, so I don't think you need actually to go into fabric, just fur will be enough. And then I moved to London and I worked for Zandra Rhodes, fashion designer, and Andrew Logan, an artist, and it all seemed to grow and gel together until I did my first collection. Really, I didn't take it very seriously, but we've gone from there to where we are now, so I think that's how I got into it, just it, it all mixing up together and popping out as hats. Everything's handmade in next door. <laughs> yeah, my little troop is, I've got a team of fantastic makers, so I teach all of the skills of leather working, really traditional skills. You know, everything is done by hand. I don't use factories at all. So it's really nice to get that and to know that every single piece is actually genuinely unique and, um, you know, everything, you know, there's tiny differences between them all. I think it's because I didn't study design after high school, I didn't really go to any design school, so I kind of figure out my own way of doing things. Since I was a kid, I always was attracted to aesthetic in general, so it was never like, um, I didn't know it was called design or fashion or style or whatever it is, I just always been attracted to beauty in general. Uh, the thing is like, for me, to building up a story about collection, it has to come naturally. You can't pretend to be smart with your inspiration. It, it's everything natural, it's always better, I think. I don't like also that uh, inspiration that you can see clearly in the... It means you just copy-paste them, you know. I like it when the time you go into that world and play and let it grow in your mind. I think that's much more fun. Avec les, c'est Gavin Joyce um, qui m'a poussé à travailler uh, sur ces thèmes, c'est-à-dire uh, travailler sur la couleur et, et les fleurs. Le Mongol, uh, on respecte, uh, on a pris uh, le ciel. Voilà. Pour ça, j'ai choisi la couleur bleue. Ça, ça me donnait, euh, c'est joli en même temps, ça me donnait, euh, de, ça me donnait la force. It was the best time of my life uh, because I really enjoyed studying. It was everything that I wanted. Uh, so then I did my um, final collection in 2009, which was uh, shown as a part of London Fashion Week. And basically, since then, kind of my my <laughs> career started, and uh, it's like a, a fifth season that we're going to be showing now. So yeah, this how it starts. As artist or designer, um, during the process of learning or being yourself, you're learning what who you are really, and the way you uh, what you love and what inspire you, and um, then the inspiration come from the things that you really love, then you would be inspire others, I think. That's that's probably the point. And I love to go to different places and uh, collecting toys. Um, it's something I really want to have, basically, exciting me. The inspiration is, um, it's a lot about the fabrics, and the fabrics, the shape and the colors. Pastel colors that uh, Marie Antoinette liked were a great idea for, for Joyce, like lilac, dusty pink, and very light, delicate lemon. What I love about lace is that it's very, the appearance is very delicate and very fragile, but the message is very strong because it's a very powerful element. It really gives something to the woman who wear it.